Good morning. This is Jonathan with Echo Church. Today, I'd like to uh, look at Mark chapter 11. Then we're going to jump to uh, uh, so, uh, Isaiah chapter 56. Uh, Mark chapter 11 begins uh, with the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem. This is the last time uh, and the last return uh, of Jesus to the uh, center of Israel. And uh, this is the beginning of the week. And by the end of the week, Jesus is crucified. There are a couple of interesting, uh, seemingly unrelated stories in chapter 11, but uh, I see an uh, interesting pattern. And the first story is uh, actually when Jesus is uh, in the temple and he is upset uh, with what's going on. And uh, he uh, uh, chases away money exchangers and merchants. And verse 17, he says, uh, he was teaching them and saying to them, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And then uh, there's another story, a very curious story of a fig tree. Uh, Jesus sees a fig tree and goes up to it, and uh, but there's uh, no fruit. And so Jesus curses it. And later on, the fig tree withers. And uh, of course, the disciples are uh, amazed by that. And to which uh, Jesus answers that, uh, verse 23, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but be, uh, believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for you. Uh, verse 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So um, the interesting thing is these two stories, the focus is prayer. Jesus, when he enters the uh, temple, uh, he says, my house, the house of the Lord, is supposed to be a house of prayer for all the nations. And then with the incident with uh, fig tree, he talks about prayer, that if you uh, believe and, and ask anything in prayer, that it will be yours. Let me go back to the beginning <clears throat> of this chapter. Jesus enters Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the heart of uh, Israel. So here's the lesson for us. Whenever Jesus enters our life and comes to uh, us and, and he wants to bring about changes, in fact, uh, as I said, this is the last time that Jesus is in Jerusalem and Jesus dies on the cross. And in fact, Jesus brings about the changes, the massive changes uh, in, the, in the heart of the people of Israel through his death and resurrection. Whenever Jesus wants to bring about changes, he comes to the heart of and the center of uh, our life, uh, in this case, Jerusalem. And the first thing he does is to go to the play, uh, place of worship. Uh, the temple, and then he cleanses it. He gets rid of all the external uh, uh, extra things that were not necessarily in and of themselves uh, wrong, but uh, that is th those are not the heart of worship. Th those are not the heart of uh, prayer. And, and he gets rid of those things. And then he says, my house, the place of worship, is a place of prayer. And, and the interesting thing is uh, verse 24, uh, excuse me, verse 17. Um, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? Now, this quote actually comes from Isaiah 56. And so I'm going to jump to uh, Isaiah 56, and I would like to uh, read uh, the first uh, eight verses. Isaiah chapter 56, 
Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, keep it uh, keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the foreigner who, who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose the uh, things that please me and hold fast my covenant. I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in, the, in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted at, on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the pe uh, all peoples. The Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those uh, already gathered. And so right here it says, my house uh, shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Now, again, uh, this section is very interesting because uh, first of all, it is related to uh, worship. And uh, in the beginning, it says, keep justice and do righteousness. This, this is really the essence of worship. Worship is more than coming together uh, to sing songs, to praise him, to adore him. It is in our daily life to keep justice, to do, uh, uh, to do righteousness. And what does that mean to uh, keep Sabbath, keep the Sabbath? Of course, uh, that means to, the, the Sabbath is the day that is set apart for the Lord. Uh, out of a busy week, uh, seven days, we're supposed to set aside one day uh, for the Lord. And that is, uh, in other words, also worship the attitude of worship and making God the center of our life. And so right here in uh, Isaiah 56, uh, God is talking about what our uh, everyday life should look look like and, and that to, to keep justice, to, to do righteousness, and then to make God the center of our life, to give him uh, the proper place in our life every day. Uh, and then uh, once a week, just to set up one day apart just for the Lord. And that uh, comes from the heart of worship, to make God uh, more important than anything else and make him the center of our life. Now, uh, it talks about foreigner say these things uh, or not say these things or the eunuch uh, don't say uh, this or that. What is that about? I want you to uh, take a look at it afterwards, but it is talking about uh, believing in the impossible. Uh, the foreigner who joined uh, himself to the Lord, the Gentiles, they're afraid that maybe uh, uh, God will leave them out of the uh, the covenant and the promise. Uh, and then eunuch, I, I'm a dry tree. Uh, they cannot have children, offsprings. And yet, no, no don't say that because um, here to the eunuchs, I will give in my house and within my, uh, within my walls a monument and the name better than offspring, sons and daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name 
that shall not be cut off. And, and so here, God is promising the, the impossible. And do not, in other words, uh, discount what uh, you have in your heart, what God has placed in your heart, or what God has promised to do uh, in your life. And this brings back to the fig tree. Fig, in the fig tree, Jesus said, anything that uh, whatever you ask believing that it, it will be done that it has been done it will come uh, to uh, fruition that it will uh, become a reality for you and so combining uh, this uh, Isaiah 56 and uh, mark 11 the picture that I see is this number one a prayer of uh, pray for the impossible. Prayer is a conversation with God, and a prayer is the the center and the hub of activities. It is the uh, executive uh, branch of our life, uh, in the sense that that's where you get to interact with God, the the commander and uh, executive and the leader and the Lord and the King of our life. And in prayer, we get to glean his wisdom. Uh, we get to know his plan and his heart. And in that prayer, we can petition that we can ask and, and we can request. Prayer is not just a, a passive, uh, an effective uh, practice. It is the heart of spirituality. It is where things are decided. It is where the battles are won. Prayers are the, uh, the driving force of all the spiritual things uh, and all of the things that hap happen in our life. And, and that is why, again, both here in this place, uh, Jesus talks about uh, in the Mark 11, that Jesus is saying that the temple where uh, the God's presence is, one of the uh, important things that is happening is the prayer. This house, my house, shall be called a, a house of prayer. And not only for the select few, but for all nations, meaning that anybody can come and then here they can interact with God. Uh, in, uh, and it is a place of uh, worship. So uh, let me just uh, bring it together. L again, read uh, Mark 11 and Isaiah uh, 56. And, and this is what I see. The prayer is at the heart of a spiritual vitality. And this is where we come into contact with and uh, God and that we come into his presence. And, and it is part of our worship. And, and there that uh, uh, we can uh, begin to uh, dream with God the impossible. And, and when God wants to change our life, that he comes to that place and he wants to uh, cleanse that place of uh, worship and of prayer. And so that uh, you and I can come into his presence on a regular basis, on a daily basis, to interact with him and making decisions. And, and whatever is uh, happening in, in your prayer will impact your everyday life. And so I want to encourage you to uh, take time to read these sections and uh, make a room for a prayer, make room for worship. And, and then uh, out of there on a daily basis, come into his presence and, and begin to ask the Lord what the impossible things in your life that he wants to do with you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, for this uh, 
amazing uh, story and, and the reality of your promises. And I ask that you will open our hearts uh, to these words and that uh, teach us and, and uh, encourage us to come into your presence in prayer on a regular basis and throughout the day uh, regularly and, and to touch your heart and to be instructed uh, by your word and to receive your wisdom and the power in the Holy Spirit. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us and see you next week.